Hello everyone, welcome to Botany Option channel for the UPSC examination. Friends, in today's video, we are going to see the difference between the Nanoxylic wood and the Technoxylic wood. As we have discussed in a previous lecture, the Gymnosperms has two types of woods that is the Nanoxylic wood and the Technoxylic wood. Now, there are some specific different characteristics possessed by the Nanoxylic wood and the Technoxylic wood. In this lecture, we are going to see that differences. Alright. Now, the very first difference between the Monoxylic wood and the Pycnoxylic wood is that cambium activity is very short lived in a Manoxylic wood. All right, that is the cambium activity which is started for the secondary growth and we separate this hilum and phloem from one another. It is very short lived in a Manoxylic wood while this activity is very long lived in a Pycnoxylic wood. All right, so the short activity of the cambium is can be seen in a Manoxylic wood while the long activity of an can be, can be found in a pycnoxylic wood. So, this is the very first and the basic difference between the two. All right. Now, the second difference between the two is that the cortex and teeth are very broad in a monoxylic wood. Now, see in the diagram, the cortex plus the teeth is very large or say very broad in a monoxylic wood. While on the other hand, in the second diagram, you can see here the teeth and the cortex is very much reduced in an pycnoxylic wood. So this is a very important anatomical difference between the two that in a manoxylic wood you find cortex plus pith is very broad while on other hand in a pycnoxylic wood the cortex and the pith is very much reduced. All right. So this is the another important anatomical difference between the manoxylic wood and the pycnoxylic wood. All right. Now the third difference between the manoxylic wood and the pycnoxylic wood is the, the manoxylic wood is a compact and the soft wood while the pycnoxylic wood is a compact and the hard wood. In a picture you can clearly see here there are the lots of patches of the parent gametous cells. Now see in between there are lots of patches of the parent gametous cells. Now due to the large amount of parent gametous cells these would become the non-compact and soft in nature. Now, this is the reason why the manoxylic wood is not used for the timber purposes, right? That is why this wood does not have any economical importance and why, and this is the reason why this wood is not suitable for any type of construction. So, in a manoxylic wood, the cells are very non-compact and it is a soft type of wood. All right, on the other hand, the pycnoxylic wood is a compact wood and plus it is a hard wood all right now in a in a picture you can clearly see here there are not so many parent gameta cells and cells are very compactly arranged with each other and this compactness gives the pycnoxylic wood a strength a hard strength which is very durable in nature and due to this durability the pycnoxylic wood is largely used as a timber all right and and that is the very reason why pycnoxylic wood is used in the construction purposes. All right. So the manoxylic wood have a non-compact cells and it's a soft wood. The pycnoxylic wood is a is have the compact cells and the hard wood. All right. Now the next difference between the two types of wood is that the manoxylic wood is commercially useless, while the pycnoxylic wood is commercially very important, as we have seen in a previous slide that the manoxylic wood do not contain the compact cells and it's a very soft type of wood and now due to this softness this wood does not have any application in a construction purposes so this is why this is very commercially useless wood that is the manoxylic wood is a commercially useless wood while on the other hand the pycnoxylic wood due to its compact nature which gives him the very hard wood now, due to this presence of this hardness in this wood, this wood become commercially very important because this wood can be now used in a construction purposes or say any other type of purposes. And that is why pycnoxylic wood is commercially very important while the manoxylic wood is commercially useless. All right. Now, the next anatomical difference between the two is parangamatous rays are well developed in a manoxylic wood. Now here you can see in the manoxylic wood anatomically it contains the largely developed parent gametous rays. All right, and due to these parent largely developed parent gametous rays, 
this tissue or say this wood got the very soft nature now you should remember that the presence of these parangamatous cells gives this wood a soft nature that is more the parangamatous cells more soft will be the wood so due to the presence of well developed parangamatous rays the manoxylic wood becomes the very softer one and due to this this monoxylic wood loses all its commercial applications all right so the parangamatous rays are well developed in a monoxylic wood on the other hand parangamatous rays are very few now you can see here the parangamatous cells in the pycnoxylic woods are not developed very much and that is why the less number of parangamatous tissues gives this uh, wood a very hard nature and due to this hardness this timber got economically important one right now due to the hardness of this pycnoxylic wood this wood become the economically important and why this wood is so hard because the parangamatous rays are very few in another so there is another anatomical difference between the manoxylic wood and the pycnoxylic wood is that parangamatous rays are well developed in a manoxylic wood while the parangamatous rays are very few in a pycnoxylic wood all right now the next economical difference between the manoxylic wood and the pycnoxylic wood is that the wood from the manoxylic does not use as a timber now we have discussed why there is a reason why it is not used as a timber now on the other hand the pycnoxylic wood is used as a timber because it is an hard wood and hard woods are generally used in a timber and on the other hand the manoxylic wood is a soft wood which that is why it cannot be used as a timber so this is again a very important difference between the two that manoxylic wood cannot be used as timber while the pycnoxylic wood can be used as a timber all right now the example for the manoxylic wood is a cycas while the example for the pycnoxylic wood is the pinus now, now you can see in the picture the cycas and on the other hand there is a pinus cycas is very short plant without the branching and which has a manoxylic type of wood that is the very soft wood is present in a cycas on the other hand you can see here the large trees of the pinus growing straight away in a sky and these woods are made up of the pycnoxylic wood and which are the very hard wood and that is why these woods have very much economic importance all right so example for the monoxylic wood is an cycas while the for the pycnoxylic wood the example is a pinus all right now as we are talking about the importance of the both uh, monoxylic wood and the pycnoxylic wood and we have discussed that the pycnoxylic wood is economically more important as compared to the manoxylic wood but on the other hand the wood which is made up of the monoxylic wood is softer in nature and these soft woods can be used in a boat making in making boats that are useful in, for the traveling across the oceans all right now these the boats can be prepared by using the monoxylic wood while on the other hand the hard wood provided by the pycnoxylic wood is useful for the construction purposes and the other purposes all right so thank you very much for watching this video please like the video if you have any doubt please make comment in the comment box and please share this with your friends who are studying the botany subject and please subscribe to the botany optional channel for the upsc examination again thank you very much for watching see you in the next video